How many of you have not read the case? Huh? The Delhi. Oh, excellent. Everyone has read it. Good. Now, for the people from who are familiar with Delhi and familiar with what happened there, should not speak. <laughs> try and give others a little chance. Should not speak. Close the book. <laughs> give others a little chance. It's a bit of a dated case. In the sense, today it's a little bit of a dated case. It's slightly old, and the time frame in which it has been put is a little further behind. The idea is not to praise or criticize a particular project. The idea is to look at how you think about projects of this nature. Many projects of this nature get taken up. And how do you analyze and how do you think about projects of this nature? That is the objective of this, of any case study, in fact. Right? So what do we have in Delhi? We have this gentleman who is a representative of a large company, a large infrastructure company. And he has been sent an RFP that has been issued for a possible metro line to the airport, the capital city of the country, prestigious obviously. But he has to decide what to do. His boss has asked him, what should we do? Now he has to think of what he should tell his boss. So what is the thing going on in his mind? You know, put yourself in that situation. What's going on in his mind? So what is the first thing he would want to, you know, that will come to his mind? Anyone? What's, what's going on in his mind? A little louder. Uh, um, he was saying it, um, he was not of his mind. So financially viable. Okay. That's one. Anything? Anyone else? Ridership. Is financial viability very important for him? He's also thinking about the risks. The risks. The risk? Yes. Okay. So he'll look at what is the risk involved in taking up this project, what else? So what kind of risks? Uh, both the uh, financial, operation, uh, yeah, financial operation. So financial and operational risks of running something like this. What else? What else is going on in his mind? If it was a kind of pressure. Land, getting the land for that. Would he be worried about getting the land for this? No. no. Why not? Huh? So this is being provided by the Delhi Metro. Delhi Metro, ultimately that land has to be purchased from the private landowner. But Delhi Metro, is, process, Delhi Metro is doing that. Anyway, but then the, you see the process involved is very cumbersome. In India, we know. You are, you are continuing on your point without fully hearing me. That risk is being taken by the Delhi Metro, not by the Reliance Company. Okay. Right? In the case, the fixed infrastructure is being provided by the Delhi Metro, not by Reliance. So why would he worry about that? So that was the terms of it. So that risk doesn't exist for him, right? What may happen is tomorrow, if Delhi Metro is not able to get it, and if he has invested some money, he loses that. So to that extent, the risk is there. What is? Reputation. The reputation. Because the project was very prestigious for the city capital. Uh, a failure in that project would be a failure for that corporation. So he says that if you have a prestigious project, if you do well, you earn a name. If you don't do well, you also earn a name, right? A different kind of name. That's what you're saying? Yes. So there's a risk involved of failure in a mega project or in a very visible project. What else? Ridership. Okay, let me start putting some of these ideas through. 
So we spoke about ridership. We spoke about risk. Risk was both financial and operational. I think there was another risk, is the risk of failure in a very visible project. What else? You say the capital, this is money that is required to be invested in the project. That's a risk for him. So capital has to be invested in the project. Yes, and it should, there should be a steady source of income in <coughs> the construction period. So there should be enough income to justify that investment. So that comes in the issue of financial viability. My idea is the initial investment, which he has to guarantee that it is there to cover the entire project for construction. So the capital investment. Basically, he has to find the money for the capital investment. Is that what you're saying? Okay, okay. So he must have the capital. How, how much viability gap money he can squeeze out of his bidding? Come again. How much he can take? Viability gap money is what DMRC is offering. So how that is what he has to go back to his boss with. Because what the bid says is that if you are interested, let me know how much subsidy you want from us. And whoever asks for the least subsidy will be given this. So obviously he has to go back and tell his boss, one, whether we should make a pitch for it at all. And if we do, what is the assessment of subsidy that we want? In all such cases, there's always a possibility that if you find this project to be an extremely good project, you could say that, no, I don't want subsidy but I am willing to pay you a premium to let me be your partner. This has happened in many cases, so they offer a premium because they think there is a lot of value. Now think of what else would a company like this want to get out of a project like this? What else would that company be looking for? Is it only profit? Is it only the risk? What else would they look for? Come again. They wanted to enter into an area which has a growth potential so that they could get more business. Do you agree with this? Yes. That they wanted to enter into an area where there is a growth potential. So it's a new area of business. How will it help them? Do you agree with this? Every city in the future is going to have a metro in India. So one, one shot at this will give them an opening in the entire country. Why not? But why only India? Anything else? Any other views? The image they're going to get out of this because it's premium customers who will use this facility. And that's you see, for any use. large company, when you bid, particularly when you bid internationally, the other party is going to ask, what is your previous experience? Right? Have you done this kind of a thing before? <clears throat> but then for a new project, nobody will have the previous experience also. So he wants to score over them. So tomorrow, let's say if Saudi Arabia has a lot of money and Saudi Arabia says that we want to build a metro line connecting the center of Riyadh with the airport. So people should bid. And as you are rightly saying that not too many people have this kind of experience. He is looking for building up his CV. Look, I've done this in Delhi. Right? If he fails, 
he has the risk of what Juan said that, well, you did it in Delhi, but it failed. So you are a bad company. I'll rather take somebody who has not done it before. But suppose he does well, and it's a large infrastructure company. They've done well in many other fields. He would tend to feel a little more confident that I can do it. Sir, this would have enhanced his goodwill also, and we know that in business, goodwill plays a vital in future transactions. In? Future transactions. Okay. So that's another possibility that he'll gain from. Most of these companies, they have to spend a lot of money on their advertising budgets. So this is a very good advertisement for them. And everybody uh, comes to know of them. So that, okay. is, that is another reason. Okay. Now let's step back a little bit. Let's say, let me put that down here. So he's building a CV or building his experience. Let me move a little more into this financially viable. You see this one, this financial risk, ridership, all these three, let's club them together. Let's club these three together and see what is the possibility that this will be financially viable or what are the things going in their favor and what are the possible risks of making it financially viable. So then he'll step back and think, what is going in his favor? What are the things that you see from this which will make him feel confident that, yes, it should do well? Also, the perspective. The existing for air metro travel. line is successful. The perspective okay. for metro what else? For airline travel. It, it is because of the fact that. Come, you want? So one second. The perspective for early travel is also adding. Airline travel growth is happening. Who else? So, Come on here. Of, at the of, the local authorities have not considered the growth of the highway to the airport, but the expansion of the airport is ongoing. The expansion of the airport is happening. Airline travel is going up. Advent of private players in the, in the civil aviation industry. Advent of private operators in the civil, civil aviation industry. What else? I'm looking for replies from various people. I'm trying to, that's why I focus and go around. Come here. One, let, let her finish. One, please. Huh. Population growth and economic growth. Population growth. These are all positives. What else, Rana? No other means of uh, travel except private No other means of travel to the airport. There's no other public transport at that stage. This is the only thing. In order to avoid the congestion, traffic jam, this is the best mode available to him. Because it is the person, he can get advantage of it. Secondly, he can establish himself against the DMRC who has got the world reputation of running a metro successfully is one of the five top most of Singapore's. So, linkage with DMRC which has been very successful, there is no other public but transport, so the metro is perhaps the best option but that is there to the airport. One more reason why it was expected that it will succeed was that it was linking the railway station and a lot of people come by train, so it was a connection for them. So, so a lot of people come to the Delhi railway station and people coming to the Delhi railway station can take this metro directly from the railway station to the airport which means good connectivity with the national railway network. It's also got good connectivity with the city metro network. Right? Any other points that you see in favor? Which gives him confidence that yes, the this USP, project should do well. The USP is the check-in facility which they are going to provide. The USP is the check-in facility they are going to provide. Every station they can just check in and go into the airport. So they are providing check-in facilities. So you can go and check in at the metro station itself and that is attractive. And another uh, thing is, uh, there is a 4 km beyond Dwarka. Everybody is coming up residential area to work with. So we will be connected by this. So this will also connect a newly coming up settlement which is about 4 kilometers beyond the airport. 
So, very good connectivity from that place. Okay. Let me now try and put these things down. What did we say? Airline passengers growing. Do we have figures? What is it expected to grow to? It is today given us something like 70,000 per day. Expected to go up to how much? Per day? 270,000. That is very steep growth. Very, very steep growth. Yeah. Then the other thing is population increasing. What else? No other public transport. Good connectivity. to rail and metro, DMRC's success, what else? Check-in facilities, this is what we discussed so far, what else does he see? I don't think they can hear you. So don't talk to me, you are talking to everyone. The maximum number of persons who are prefer air travel are either settled in this particular area of South Delhi, which is a very hot area, similar to the ground area, who prefers the Where did you get this information from? From this itself. See it again. Is can that. Capture the 50% concession passengers, the employees are not equal in number, almost 170 to 50,000. They capture the 50% concession passengers. So, you are saying, you know, 50%? Concession passengers, there is a different concession of 50 rupees. 100 is what, and 50 is set for employees and all the staff and employees. So, there is a 50% concession if you buy a monthly pass, right? So, let us let's take that. Let us take that. We will come to that later. That is not. So, 50 percent concession. For monthly pass. Anything also, else that. Yes. Also, oper operational design of the scheme. Is going to be faster than the metro, regular metro. So it's faster. So it's going to be more attractive than going by car or taxi uh, in terms of congestion and other problems. So it is faster than metro. In terms of cost, how does it compare? It's, go it's going to be faster than going by car. It will be faster than going by car. This, this is going to add more demand to the to the railway. Will it be faster than cars? May may not, depending on the time of the day. Right? But what does it tell you in terms of cost? If you were to travel by the metro, how much will it cost? It's going to be cheaper. It's hundred. If you travel by taxi, how much will it cost you? So, it is cheaper, yeah. right? So, all these would tell him, look, this is a you know, likely to be viable. And what are the figures they have given about anticipated ridership? Anticipated ridership in the first year? Forty-six thousand. Number of passengers per day today is seventy thousand. But is this forty-six thousand 
going to come only from the 70,000? So they work. There are workers. And what does it tell you about likely workers? Almost double the number of passengers. Says so roughly about the same number, right? So you can say that 46,000 out of 140,000. So these are the, some of the numbers that Mr. Gupta has to play around with. Will you make up your mind on this? Very good project, let's go for it. No? One more thing. EFA has come down drastically and which was comparable with the train fare. So that is leading to the airline passenger growth. Right? That's where the airline passenger growth has happened. Why did you say no, Juan? Not for the corporation. I mean, for the corporation, it's going to be viable because it's going to have a capital subsidy. But for the city, I think it's very expensive for 46,000 passengers to invest in this kind of metro. Maybe there's a short to middle term solution in other transport system like a BRT that is cheaper and can cope with this demand uh, in a very good way. So that's why I think it's not viable, but for the company, if they receive a subsidy by the government, it may be a good experience. So what you're saying is that there may be lower cost options of building this. He has no choice. This is decided by somebody else. The only choice he has is should I go for it or not go for it? What would you think a little deeper now? Think a little deeper now. One thing important here is that one has to know the pattern of traffic which needs to be studied. If you see the airline uh, passenger traffic, you'll find if you stand at the airport, you find that uh, normally. For every person, every passenger, there are at least three to four passengers who accompany him to see him on. It's a normal train. So it's not one person uh, who is going to come to the airport. It's at least three or four persons. Okay. So what? If you have one person traveling, there are invariably a few others who are accompanying. And particularly if it is international travel. A lot of people will go, we don't know whether we'll see him again. He might go and just settle down there, he may not come back, so let's see him off. The major worry for me would be that uh, half the project is handled by DMRs, that's the real metro, and half project I will be handling it, and both are going to go parallel. <coughs> so I really don't know what's the confidence level, how they will do civil construction design and all that they, the metro is doing. And I'm supposed to come up with a rolling stock and it's a stock. Okay, so that becomes another thing to think and, about. Uh, and two Any? more issues. Actually, Oops, sorry. Yeah, who, 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 who? Two okay, more issues. Yeah. When a family goes to the airport, normally they prefer a car than a metro. That is one likelihood of a positive or negative aspect of that. And next one is, we are forecasting the employees around 46,000 will go by metro daily. But compared with the uh, rate at the uh, uh, cost of travelling by metro. I don't think that much of uh, employees may go prefer the metro. That's one. So they may not, uh, too many employees may not, may not take the metro. Let's, let's go, let's go, you know, based on this, let's go a little deeper and see what is the class or categories of people who travel to the airport. And let's take each one of them and see what is the likelihood that he will take the metro or not take the metro. Let's do this little analysis. Let me put it here. I say yes, no, uncertain. Okay? Roughly. It may not apply in every case, but broadly. Can we think of a few categories of passengers? Let me put one or two and then help me with more. Let me say one is the business traveller.
What is the difference between a business traveler and a personal traveler? Who is paying that taxi fare for the business traveler? Right? Does he care? If he stays in a hotel or he stays in one of his, uh, you know, government guest houses, the car will take him right from his guest house and drop him straight at the airport. That 100 rupees to 250 rupees, does he care? What he may care is, will I reach the flight? That's the only thing that might bother him. We'll go a little more to, you know, the congestion periods and all that. But that money doesn't bother him, right? So let's say, in his case, it's a no. Now let me take a holiday traveler. Now when you travel on holiday, how often do you travel alone and how often do you travel with your family? If you're not traveling with your family, you're traveling with someone else and not telling your family. <laughs> right? So, most cases, you're not going alone on a holiday. Let's say holiday. And let me qualify it by saying group. Why will he not take the metro? It's cheaper than taxi. Because they share the fare. Right? If there are two people, this is 200, this is 250, 50 rupees, one dollar, does he care? So, no. Very often it's happened that there is some wedding in the family somewhere far off and all the relations who are there are expected to attend and in most families in India, I have had to do that many times. My father says, I can't go, look, you go and attend on our behalf. So I am going alone. I am going for two days with just one little handbag. What will I do? Will I take it? I'll take it. But under what conditions will I take it? There's good level of modal integration from where you're coming from to where you're taking the trains. So is that metro available to me from close to where I stay? It's taking me to the airport, all right. But how much do I have to travel to get to the metro station? So let's say holiday individual, shall I put it here? If I live close to the metro station, it doesn't make sense not to take it. But if I live a little far away, you know, suppose I live like in this area which is just 4 kilometers and if my house is close to the metro station, if I have to take the metro 4 kilometers, and I live two kilometers from the metro station, what would I do? We'd drive a taxi. We'd drive a taxi. We'd have to walk a lot. Uh, Might just walk, that, right? Uh, uh, Maybe easy. Long than one kilometer, I think that's a people taxi than the metro. Okay. What other category can you tell me? Think of some other categories. What other categories of passengers? Ah, now this is a very important point. Will it be different for people who are going to take the flight vis-a-vis -vis people who are coming back? What is the difference? Time. When you are going, you don't want to miss the flight. When you are coming back, there is less of a risk. So even if you are a little late in reaching home, you might get a scolding, but you won't miss the flight, right? So, there is a difference between people going and coming. Now, 
will it be any different for these three categories between going and coming? In these three categories, for a business traveler, will he care either way? If you are on a group holiday, will you care either way? For an individual, he might. The individual might prefer to take the metro while going, no, I mean, he might prefer to take a cab while going, but on the return, he will say, look, why should I spend so much money? What other categories can you think about? The workers. Okay, let's have workers also in multiple groups. So workers, let's say low wage and let's say the higher wage. <coughs> what happens to the lower wage workers? Will they take it? How much does it cost them? If you take a monthly pass and get a 50% discount, it's 100 rupees and even if you say 25 days, 100 rupees per day, let's say his monthly pass is for 25 days. Two hundred rupees, so 100 rupees per day. So he'll have to spend 2,500 rupees on this. Hmm? You have to pay 3,000 if you take all 30 days per month. If you take that he's traveling 30 days in a month. See, sometimes what they do is monthly pass, they take it as 25 trips. So let's say he's given him the benefit and say, look, up to 25 trips. We're not charging you for 30 trips, but I'm charging you for 25 trips. And he says 50% discount. So 2,500 rupees. Low-income worker in the airport, will he want to spend that kind of money? Hmm? He'll rather take a bus. He's willing to take some amount of inconvenience and pay 20 rupees by that bus fare. They may not be living near the metro, absolutely. He'll have to take a bus in any case to get to the metro station, right? What about the higher wage workers at the airport? The higher wage workers are low in number. Huh? They are small in number. <laughs> so the low wage workers, even though smaller, will they take it? Why? They can afford it. So where they live, they can afford to drive. So who is going to take it? Tell me one category that will take it. I am at a loss now. Huh. So people who come from other cities in the country, who are coming into Delhi to board international flights, for them it's convenient, right? They will take this to get to the airport, it's very convenient for them. For those who are familiar, Punjab, a lot of people from the Punjab area, they come to Delhi and take this bus, I mean take this uh, Shatabdi or something, come here, go to the airport and fly off to Toronto. I used to call it the Jalandhar to Toronto model. For them, it's perfect. But what is happening with that, now that you are familiar with this, what is happening with those passengers? Today, they get buses right from their hometown straight to the airport. So they are not coming to the Delhi station. For them it is convenient because 20 of them they come to see them. So but for that group 
it's 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 very convenient for that group is very convenient now so let's say low wage we said no higher wage we said no then we said outstation outstation passengers we said this group is likely but perhaps the number is going to decrease as volumes go up because then they might be able to find options to travel straight from their hometown directly to the airport but yes that group would otherwise find it convenient what about incoming people say international travelers coming in what about them What are the timings of the metro? I think that's a very good point you made in the sense that Delhi, there are so many reports of, you know, criminal activities against international travelers. And the metro would give them a sense of safety. It's much safer than taking a taxi at night. But the metro doesn't run at night. So, one option is for them to wait. You know, if the flight has come in at 3 o'clock or 2 o'clock, you wait till about 5.30 when the metro starts. Uh, you might do that if the hotel you are going to is close to the metro station. Huh? Backpackers. No budget. A lot of backpackers who used to go to Pahadganj areas and stay there. For them, I'm sorry, I'm going into a little geography of Delhi, which for others will be a little this thing. But when I show it to you on the map, you'll see it uh, later. Now, what else? Who else will use it? If they are given cash, if they are given cash, you mean by the companies? Yes. So, say if if someone is belongs to a certain company, and he is told that uh, we'll give you cash, this amount of cash, yes. and if you save anything out of it, you can keep it. So you don't have to claim reimbursement. He might try to save money by taking the metro. Yes, yes, that right? Would would that be reasonable? Yes. <coughs> there are there is a segment probably at the airport it's difficult to get check in and things like that. It's easy to check in say some station across this. Right? They'll definitely come and take this. Why would they wait uh, miles in a line of queues at the airport? That's not you see, the thing to remember is where is he taking the metro from? If he doesn't live close enough. He has to take some other mode to get to the metro station. And here you have a 22 kilometer metro with how many stations? Six. Six. Typically for a 22 kilometer metro, how many stations would you have? About 10, 11, right? So he has fewer stations because he wants to make it an express. But in making it fewer stations, he is losing potential captive passengers. How do you get around that problem? How do you get around this kind of a problem? See, this is what is known as, on the first day you had this presentation, transit-oriented development. So this is what land use and transport planning, integration of land use and transport planning means. How do you get more people to live close to such facilities or work close to such facilities that they become attractive. Okay, so now, I mean as we go into further, oh let me take one more, what about 
airline crew again depends on where they stay right what do most airlines do for their crew provide taxis so they have their own airline vehicles or provide taxis because the airline is worried that if he doesn't reach on time the flight won't take off so they provide so even this yeah michael um, this analysis Use this a little louder. Um, I'm, I'm just wondering that this analysis doesn't take into account a number of things. One of them is that the metro is already quite successful, and this is going to be integrated in, in the census system. I mean, we have one million passengers, and I would expect a good number of people, of such people, would be interested in who are going to the airport, would be interested in continuing with the same kind of journey. The second thing is that you already have about 65 kilometers of the metro line, which is planned to go up to 400 kilometers, that means that it extends its capture of these other passengers. Um, and then the other thing is that the issue of level service that is going to be provided on the metro, it can attract a few more people because if you're providing some of the conveniences that someone may not even get on a taxi or some other means, it might capture a few more people. So I would think that like business travelers, some categories will go this way and that will depend on the kind of service that is provided. So, basically what Michael is saying is that because you have a metro network which is taking a fairly large ridership and it is fairly well connected, the stations of the metro network would also act as captive points for the airline, right? That's what you're saying. And that's why people in most of these groups, those who live close to a general metro station, not necessarily the airport line, may also prefer to take that. Okay? What? With the one catch, they can't carry a lot of luggage. Luggage can be The Delhi metro is very crowded. It's very, very crowded. <laughs> Carrying one suitcase on that. Oh. Yeah, nightmare also for the traveler to, huh? to move the luggage from one station to Let's go back to Mr. Gupta. What does he do? He's done this analysis or someone has come and spoiled his day and done this analysis for him. Let's go a little and see a bit of the maps. You know, after all, uh, DMRC has also made some projections and they've done some analysis. So let's take a look at that analysis. Who can we have those slides? This is the network. So this is the overall network. The airport line is this one. It really runs through what is known as the upmarket part of Delhi, South Delhi, that is where everyone wants to be. This is the airport line. Let's go to the next slide. Oh, okay. Now, what Delhi Metro did was when they made the analysis, they divided the city into multiple zones. And they did a survey of how many people come from different zones in the city. And based on that, they decided the alignment for this line. You know, when they said that it will run from New Delhi station to the airport, the reason they decided New Delhi station was because they found that the largest share of the traffic coming to the airport was coming from that area. Now, that is, if you look at the annex, 
which is the zone where most of them are coming from? This zone 6? Was, uh, 40, 40, this was, uh, based on which place? Huh? Let, let's, this is the data available. Let's go with that. We'll go into you know, the merits of that later. Today, what Mr. Gupta has is this data. Now, which is the zone giving the highest ridership? Look at this table. This table. This is the table on page Annex 5. Look at Annex 5. Which zone is giving the highest share? 14. Hmm? 14. So, which is 14? 14 is here. This is 14. Second highest? Six. So this belt, you see this belt is what is giving the highest ridership. And that's why they decided to run this metro from this point, coming up to the airport which is here. Now, these are static parts of Delhi. These are parts of Delhi that are really not growing much. Now, for those who are familiar with Delhi, could you tell everyone else which do you think are the growing parts of Delhi? This is the growing part of Delhi, and this is the airport. The growing parts, this is Gurgaon, South, this is the growing part of Delhi. So, in any city, so you've seen, this, it's not just Delhi, but in most cities around the world, when the sprawl happens, population grows in the outskirts. It doesn't grow in the central part of the city. Right? The central part of the city in most old cities is thinning out. It's not growing. It's the outskirts that are growing. Have we captured the growing part of the city? This is where you look at, you know, when you do transport planning, you need to integrate it with how your city is growing. You must integrate it with land use planning. What has happened here, it seems that whatever is today's situation, we presume that this will remain and we've just captured that. And that's why you used to call it the Ludhiana to Toronto model because the railway station will remain there. So people coming from outside will come to the railway station which will continue to remain there. And for them to travel to the airport, it seems to be a very sensible thing to do. But I think what was not taken into account is that larger volumes, they'll start getting buses directly from there. So, what do you take away from this case? What is the message you take from this? I'm just opening it up, any discussion. It's not likely to be viable. So, Mr. Gupta would probably think it may not work. That I'll ask Mr. Bhatnagar to tell us. But let's, you know, it's not, it's not the individual case. It's not the individual case. I mean, the idea is we're using this as an example to look at similar examples elsewhere. Sam. I just want to say that I have some summary statistics from okay. all over the world. Okay. Sam will put something up there. Any other, any other lessons that you draw? Now, what happened was this still went ahead. Mr. Gupta, I don't know what he told his boss, but the company decided to go ahead. What happened later, Mr. Bhatnagar will tell you, but why do you think they probably decided to go ahead? Do you think one was right? 
Maybe they were trying so to build a city. It will be a hub airport that is the first in South Asia to have a metro connecting the airport with the downtown area. I mean, many of these projects, it has to be more with communication or reputation than with viability. To, to create the, the idea of a city, there is you no know, uh, in the edge of development in, in an area or a region. Louder, louder, louder. So they had earlier went for a project and successfully bought it. That was in Mumbai. So they were already executing one project in Mumbai. And uh, probably they thought that uh, this could be a similar project. And uh, they had some, some expertise also. So that was another incentive for them. So they felt confident that since we are already doing one project in Bombay, we could do this also. And they thought it will add value to their business. So from DMRC's point of view, uh, why did they go and do this? I mean, go for PVP because capital, they wanted anyway, they wanted to invest in this. For the operating cost, they wanted to give to somebody else and try it. Why I am asking this question is, they even tried doing this with buses which they couldn't take off. I mean, the airport express buses, I was told that they was to start off from Moida to 200 buses or they never started off. Even the mini buses, the feeder buses, also they tried to do. And that also didn't work. It didn't do anything there because it's never on rails. Let me not, let me not react to that in front of everyone. Okay. <laughs> I, 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 I left the, uh, the reasons for deciding uh, why why not was not only the viability of the diversion. First, they were to see other reasons also, which were probably you cannot fit them there. One was that common uh, things were to be had, and uh, it, it was uh, seen as a showcase for uh, Delhi. So, so a lot of property to be developed and property. money to flow from property. That was one expectation. One, one more thing that I missed out. If you look at your, uh, if you look at the data on the case, what is the international experience? What is the experience from other countries on similar metro lines? What is the data from the other? There are a number of other cities where you have similar lines. What is the data? Public transport is very big share for public transport per se. Of course, buses more than train, but they were getting some good shares. What is the share that you can expect through public transport? What What does this tell you? Tokyo and Europe. Tokyo and Europe. So up to about 40, 50 percent. Now if you look at one more thing on that, wherever the figure is a little high, what is the distance from the airport? Yeah, that is very important. The distance are normally 25 to 30 kilometers and the incentive is substantial. Like even in Seoul, you pay for about $24 for the airport express and there is for the cab or the so, length. Sam is showing us something on airport statistics. See, airport in access. major cities of Europe and Tokyo showed that the public transport could uh, capture 28 to 62%. 28 to 62 percent. Now, 46,000 out of 70,000. Hmm? Or rather 46,000 out of 140,000. And, and the 62 percent is both metro and bus. Here you are talking of only the metro. What is the message you take away before Sam? Okay, okay, look at this, look at this. You want to explain that a bit, Sam? You see here that these are the mode shares for different modes for big airports by continent. And you see that in Asia Pacific, and every one of these airports here for the Asia Pacific case have rail links, the airport access percentage on rail averages 
percent in Europe, it averages 18 percent, and then in North America, it's below below 10 percent. Next, uh, this is Hong Kong, and you'd be hard pressed to think that anywhere in the world has a better case for rail access to an airport or rail for anything than Hong Kong, and you see here that the airport rail access most share in Hong Kong for all purposes is 23 percent uh, compared to bus at 47 percent. Next, and here's some statistics uh, from the U.S. and the highest mode share for rail of any airport rail link in the U.S. is around 15 percent. Next, here's Europe the highest mode share by rail of any airport in Europe, and I think it's actually the highest in the world, is around 44%. Next, and this is what I discovered this morning, most interesting, and I speak as an honorary citizen of India when I say this, so I want to make sure that people understand that this phenomenon of overestimating ridership and underestimating cost, particularly overestimating ridership, is not a uniquely Indian problem or issue. And the first year estimate for the rail link to Inchon Airport was uh, 200 and, and over 200,000 daily passengers. The actual number was 16,000. So anyway, some these are benchmarks. Like as OP says, these are benchmarks. Well, what is the correct way, or scientific way, to study the ridership pattern? What are the ways? What are the ways of studying the ridership pattern on uh, anything? The movement of the person in the, within the city from A point to B Sam? point. What are the The question is, what is the right way of looking at the ridership? The ridership pattern, to study the ridership pattern, that the people are moving from, say, A point to B point or C yeah, point say to B point. point. What is the scientific way to know that? Well, first of all, what OP has gone through the state case study to demonstrate is not really about triple P's. It's not about the Delhi Airport Railway. It's really about the factors that influence travel behavior. And the approach to estimating travel demand has to consider three sets of, ca of characteristics. The first set is the characteristics of the, of the traveler. Income, age, as a case in point, availability of, of a car, for example. A second very important set of characteristics is the trip. Where are you starting the trip? And where are you ending the trip? So that's why OP focused on how many people are actually going to the center versus other places in Delhi. Uh, also, OP focused on distance. That's a trip characteristic. He also focused on purpose. If you're going somewhere for a long time, you're going to be carrying luggage. That's an issue. Uh, a second aspect or third aspect of trip is how many people are traveling. Do you make a separate decision for you how you go on vacation? and say to your family, you're on your own, I'm taking the train, or I'm taking the car. No, you make that as a collective decision. And last, what are the options? How good or bad are they? Given where I'm going, why I'm going, who I'm going with, when I'm going, Opie mentioned that as well, what are my options? So the scientific way of doing it is to break the market up into different pieces. And there are ways to use existing uh, responses to airport railings in other cities and in your own city to develop mathematical models to do the prediction. But I can't wanted to know exactly about the mathematical models. One second, one second. Is that, is that what you wanted to know? I wanted to know about the mathematical models, how to find out the number of people moving from western city side to say northern city side. Well, there, there are two ways that the models are developed. They're called travel demand models. One way is based on the existing behavior, where you do surveys of people at home, people at terminals, people by the side of the road. And those are called revealed behavior surveys, because you're actually doing the behavior. Yeah. 
reveal preferences. Right. Another way is to do stated preferences. And I personally don't like them because the way the questions are fixed is, would you use a rocket ship to the airport that costs very little, or would you prefer to take a very costly bus that will take forever and stop <laughs> Revealed versus stated preference surveys are very dangerous. But one thing I, I want to say on this, on this modeling issue, on the benchmark, I mean, you can develop models, and we know how to do it. This isn't, these aren't accidents here. We know how to do it. But when the highest mode share for airport, originating airport passengers in the world, anywhere in the world, on the planet, today, is 44%, and you're predicting 50 or 60 percent. Okay, okay. Sam. Sam, yeah, that should give you an indication. The simple answer to your question is that, that the onboard survey where you actually measure the people riding the bus, give them a small questionnaire, where you are coming from, That's where you are coming from, your agenda, what is going from. That's an onboard survey. Only for the bus passengers. For the other passengers like car, you have four and count surveys. On every intersection, or you do it at home. Or clock watch, measuring the number of people, who, number of cars that are crossing this particular point. <laughs> you also see number of people riding that car, which is your vehicle occupancy. Or you do the, the home based survey, which is actually go to home. And, and, and so these are di three different kinds one of way, One so way which I, which I would like to uh, mention here was suggested by someone we were discussing with a technical expert is the movement of mobile data. Yeah. So that was a very good way, suppose in Delhi terminology, I start from North Delhi campus and I go to South Delhi campus, I would be having a mobile mobile data, I would have rung up to my friend and the signal would have got at that location, how many mobiles are working at one particular tower and the same, another location, how many mobiles are working at one particular tower. That shows the people move from A point to B point, and these many chunks of people. It's a quick data system. That's one source of data, but remember, that doesn't tell you who was traveling. It exactly. doesn't tell you what the trip purpose was. Number, number. It doesn't tell you what the options are. Show the number. No, no. This is one second. This is excellent. This is an excellent way of finding out what is the current number. state. I was only thinking of number. Yeah. No, no. Well, you think of number, that's fine, that's fine. See, what Sam was talking about was more Thanks. about forecasting, right? What you're talking about is more on what is the existing situation. You need the existing situation for things like managing how to flow. See, his job requires him to know the current situation, right? My what job you is were talking about. How many people there are right. a particular signal? So, for him, that's important. What you were explaining was more about traffic Prediction. forecasting. How do you predict what will be the traffic? Right? So both are correct except yeah. that uh, the perceptions were slightly different, the needs were slightly different. Okay. Do you want to tell everyone what happened can I, can after I you? Add, please. Yeah, I'm sorry, Sam, I tend to disagree with you. About the I was involved in preference uh, modeling. Disagreement modeling. Absolutely, UK, we do do this sort of thing. A little louder. I'm standing right here, still not able to make out what you're saying. A Sorry. little louder. Yeah, but I, I work in a disaggregate modeling and a disparate demonization. So, absolutely, in the UK and Europe, we do easy to perfection to some extent. And if I were to meet Mr. Gupta, I, it depends on the time allowed because he's under pressure to give a yes or no. And I will see the other uh, the trend in other airports and to, to make a decision and also do some sensitivity analysis, 10 to 20 percent, and see that whether it makes any business sense or not. But the issue here being the, whether Reliance would like to go into this business or not. And I'm not that's talking the, about yeah, Reliance yeah. per se. But the, if, as, as, if, as you say, the scientific way is to go for preference approach. It's called standard preference or real preference. Real preference is if you have the slides already and to see the how people move and you model it and you try to predict it. And the standard preference, you don't have the line now. So you ask people what do they do. It's a bit, a bit uh, uh, sometimes it, it can give you uh, make, uh, not, not a very accurate signal of who would be traveling and how they travel. But it, there's a lot of factors involved. 
So that's the best possible. So thank you for repeating what I said. You're absolutely right. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. Mm -hmm. Do you want to say what happened later? Normally, we don't like to do this, but here everyone would be interested after discussing. But what happened in this case? What happened was, initially, it was promised that it will cut down the turning time between the station and the airport, which is considered to be one of the incentives for cutting by which are just uh, road map. In this particular case, the train was supposed to travel at 140 km The engine stop was prepared for 140 km In actual practice, the train uh, speed could not exceed 50 km so that was Let me cut you short. Don't go into all those technical details. Let's go into what finally happened. They predicted 46,000. How many people came? What did Reliance do? That's all. You don't have to go into all those. Uh, it, it the ridership was not as correct. And there were uh, terms and conditions in the agreement that in case they are not able to meet the uh, they are not used to the there were the termination agreements. Uh, by, and according to those agreements, Delhi Metro was supposed to take over the entire operation. Uh, Reliance found it unviable. They terminated the contract, and uh, the con uh, now the Delhi Metro has taken over the running of these uh, metros, and they are running it. There are actually so many things which can be Is it still running, sir? One, one, one more is still running. Yes. The airport express is still running. It is still running, but entirely by DMRC. The private party is gone. They started with 16,000 against 46,000. So, some of the discussion that we had was it provides good connectivity to the railway system. But what Anjum is telling us is that, okay, it starts from the railway station, but even between the railway station and the metro station, the connectivity is very poor. You have to go outside the railway station, come into the metro station, and with all that luggage, you don't find it convenient. Bus to the uh, terminal 2 or something. I, I use that bus. Bus to the Okay. So anyway, poor connectivity. The net result is the net result is you had much lower ridership than what was predicted. And today's reality is the private company said that look, I mean they had to find some way of getting out. So my reading is one sec. My reading is they said safety is the best way of getting out, saying it is unsafe. So I don't want to take the risk of lives of passengers. It's an excellent way of a private partner to get out. You know? So finally, the Delhi Metro had to take over their shares and today is being run by the Delhi Metro. The question I ask, should the public sector be running a service like this? See, public sector, private sector won't, exactly. So, for the public sector to run a project like this, you don't run it for profits. See, public sector doesn't do something for profits. Public sector really looks at doing something for a public good. Is there a public good to this that can justify this being done through the public sector? No, public good. Larger sense, not in a very... No, Think about it. Not no, such no. an easy answer. Not such an easy answer. Could there be better options? This again is more for people in yes. Delhi. Could yes. there be BRT. better options? BRT. Hmm? Sam is dying to say something. What about people that work at the airport? There's not just one market at the airport. It's not just passengers. There are workers. So people are. working at the airport, they need to travel there every day. But there is an affordability yeah, but issue. But investing that amount of money for a train for 16,000 passengers. No, for that you don't need an express link. No, of course not. Hey, for workers, for workers to commute to the 
Ah, io più passi via con lei. Let me, let me give you one more thing just by way of academic interest is irrelevant now. One suggestion that was made, Taj will find this interesting. Instead of building the line from here to the airport, you see this distance, you build it all the way to somewhere here. See, this is the river. <coughs> this is the Jamuna River. And for a long time in Delhi, there was a bit of a psychological barrier that you don't want to cross the river. If you cross the river, you've gone far away. So a suggestion being made was, why don't we build this line from the airport right up to some point here? Because this was also being done in a big way for the Commonwealth Games. And this is where the Games Village was coming up. So if you build the line right up to the Games Village, one, it serves your Commonwealth Games requirement immediately. Secondly, you are opening up the entire Trans Jamuna area to the airport. So people coming from Trans Jamuna, they are coming quite a long distance. And for them, it may make more sense to come up to this point and transfer to the airport. Whereas for people, and, and that is all a growing area. The Trans Jamuna area, this whole area is a growing area. There has been some kind of a clamor for another airport somewhere here. They say you can link this to the existing airport if you build an express line from that point. This is one of the ideas that came up at that stage. Yet another suggestion that came was that instead of building the line here, you already have this line. You extend, no, you had this line up to here. You extend it here and then link it to this line. You know, build it as a ring and make the airport a part of the regular metro system. Right? That was the other suggestion which was made. But somehow there were enough forces which pushed this line to happen. And uh, <laughs> Okay, any other takeaways that you have before we wind up? Any other comments? Hmm? Present day ridership, any ideas? 8,000? 8, 10,000? 10, but here I feel that even the business model was in favor of uh, uh, Reliance for every in order to navigate. More and more in favor of? In uh, favor of Reliance. Because you see, even in case of default of Reliance, he gets away by getting. Let's not go into that. Here is a general case. You know, Reliance, what Reliance can do in India, we all know. The 6,000, 10,000 who use it, you may not have that. But my guess is, I mean, at least some of the people I've spoken to and who tend to like this are people who are staying close by, you know, walking about half a kilometer. Dwarka is one. Actually, frankly, even I feel even for people in the Dwarka area is not very convenient because they are only four kilometers from the airport. So instead of traveling one kilometer, they would much rather take that short thing. But a lot of people living in the central part, no, people, people living in this area, people living in this area, who are not very far, they tend to take it. Mostly, sir, it's still people coming on the railway. How many? How many? Mostly people coming to New Delhi railway station. They tend to use it, yeah. So people coming to the railway station. See, let me tell you one more thing. Let me tell you one more thing. See, here, uh, one sec, let me get where I am. This area. See, this area, you have a lot of the backpack travelers. And they have a lot of budget hotels for backpack travelers. A lot of them are here. So that is where the original traffic was coming from. And uh, they tend to use it quite a bit. Exactly. Yeah, 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 yeah. But do um, workers Not much. It's not affordable to them. So you need to think, you know, what else could have been done? The problem, after all, remains that the airport is getting crowded. Access to the airport is getting crowded. What else can we do? 
is something to think about. I don't want to give answers here, but something that you want to think about. Okay. We'll end with this. Let's break for coffee and announcements. <laughs>